Jesus H. Christ, that was the sound of Feed the Beast by Z Rain. Absolutely fantastic track. I'm delighted to welcome uh, Chris and Pavel. How are you, lads? How are you getting on, boy? How are you getting on? Uh, lads, Jesus, what an opening track. Great to have you back, first of all. It's been a while. Yeah. How long? Um, That's like. Oh, uh, Jesus. And 2017, was it? Um, I have no perception of time. Uh, <laughs> I'm not very good with Yeah. Uh, who Fucked the Monkey was July the 25th, 2017. Fucking hell. Mm. Recorded and mixed by Pavel Rasa, mastered by Aiden. Or Aiden, Aiden. Him. Three years, lads. Time's going fast. Yeah, man. Uh, I've gotten grey in the process. You have. I've gotten fatter. Bit. I've gotten fatter. I think some of my teeth are falling out. I don't know. <laughs> That's probably the crack. It's tough to talk, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> the rock star lifestyle. <laughs> Let's fucking get into it then. When did you start thinking about putting songs together? I'll put that to you first. I'd say like uh, after my last band before that, uh, I had some ideas. So I recorded some demos. Okay. I programmed the drums, recorded bass, guitars. And I was kind of looking around for people who would be interested in playing. Right. And at the time I was playing in a band and we were whoring ourselves out for experience, basically. We played about 
80 to 85 gigs in one year. Oh, it was what band was it that, It was with Petrofia. Okay. And uh, I'd say we were playing Fred's once a week, sometimes <laughs> twice a week. Right. And he was fucking blue in the face from listening to us because we were pretty shy to start. Just starting out, yeah. getting our tops together. And um, yeah, he was... He kind of confessed to me later on after we became friends. He was like, when you'd come in the door, man, I'd just put my head down. He'd be like, not this shit again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It was right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so he kind of, he asked me. He showed me a few tracks. I initially didn't like it very much. It was way different than this now. Okay. It just sounded like no, new metal kind of shite. Are we talking about the new album now? Or are we talking no, about no, Who Fucked the Monkey? Just the, the, the Who okay, Fucked the Monkey. But then I was right. like, I, I definitely have a lot to learn from him. Right. So I was like, I'll go to school. I'll go to school. Yeah, okay. And uh, But what did that kind of school entail? Like, all everything to do with equipment. Like, right. I have no no mind for any techie stuff okay. whatsoever. Um, so I was just watching everything he was doing mm-hmm. um, and any bit of advice. And then he was booking gigs and stuff like that. So after we got the initial couple of songs out of the way and Who Fucked the Monkey, we kind of got a bit more comfortable with ourselves. Right. And started kind of arsing about. Yeah. But uh, he'd play something that I'd hate, and instead of me going, no, I don't like it, I go, I'll just do something I like over it instead. And okay. then more people kind of added to it. You kind and of it became um, weirder and weirder. Yeah. Um, but like, kind of with the, I suppose, the musical direction, first of all, of Z Ren with Who Fucked the Monkey. Yeah. Um, it was kind of, we just wanted to get off the ground. Yeah. You know, I'd never actually recorded something myself properly. Okay. Ever. So I was just ticking boxes and trying to get as much experience as I could. Yeah. And, and you, you had the the members back then was... Um, we went through a few. You did, yeah. What was the girl's name again? So Eileen. it was Eileen and Eileen. bass and we had, Jesus, David on drums. Right. Then we got a d- different so Dave I on s- bass. Yeah, I saw ye you saw in that, that lineup um, in Fred's. That was the first time I saw you yeah. as Z-Ren. There was a, that was a big night, actually. It was, it was, it was well yeah, packed. Yeah, it was packed. Yeah, it was fucking fantastic. I was playing a didgeridoo like an arsehole. Yeah, you were, actually. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is that actually being put into a wardrobe and left? I, I was using it for... Um, Effects. That, and I started, like... Because I was for, like, singing techniques and warm-ups and all that. Everything I found, it was just, like, make the most stupid fucking noises you can and it'll warm you up. And I was trying to find ways of warming up without sounding like a fucking clown. Yeah, right. <laughs> and it was like I was using the digs to warm up, like breathing and diaphragm okay. strength and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And then we were just he, we were messing around with his looper station. Okay. And once the novelty of it wore off, I got a bit better at doing the old kind of throat singing stuff as well, so I could mm-hmm. kind of emulate a didgeridoo better than I could play a didgeridoo. Right. And as well, you know, it was. I had dreadlocks and I was carrying around a shitty didgeridoo like it looked like yeah. a fucking idiot. Like, but like so. your your <laughs> the vocal carry and your you know the pitches you reach and stuff. Jesus Christ! Like you you, you definitely. How how soon did you learn that you had to kind of do warm ups? Um. Well, like I was singing. It's a fucking stupid stereotypical thing. I've been singing since I was a child, Richie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Parents thought I was gay till I was about. They actually probably still think I'm gay. To be fair. Yeah, um, this, this is a non-discriminatory program. Yeah, yeah, no, but like I was very, very like always karaoke and stuff when I was younger. That crack and then altar boy kind of that kind of crack horror boy. Yeah, yeah, okay. And um, never very good. I was never been very, never very good at anything like that. And then I started singing in metal bands, and I thought it was all right till someone video recorded me, and then I was just. I think I just sat in the corner for about two days, just going, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. So I just trawled the internet for tips and tricks on how to do fucking better vocals right and i ended up doing the low screams and all that by accident just really? just from jamming with bands okay over and over and over again because like you can't i live in the city like you can't practice screaming in your house like do you know no. what i mean true so it was just from jamming with bands and i learned one trick i learned how to do a good death metal growl and i just flat it for about three years mm. and then i seen other bands kind of doing different types of stuff and i was like you know i better step up the game a bit yeah and um to be fair, like you, you do go to a fair amount of gigs as well. So, yeah, you know. So I was always anytime I got a bit comfortable with myself, and I thought I was going to doing a good job. I'd see someone who was doing something class, and I'd be like, oh, "Fuck him!" Now yeah. I go home and I do that. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, and most of it, man, was just trial and error. And um, how difficult is it, kind of, for your personality? Because like I know you from being out in the scene as such, yeah. like, and you're probably louder than life, if you don't mind me saying. But <laughs> I, that's the way you come across. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. 
But then kind of as a vocalist, then do you kind of retreat into your shell a bit more? Are you conscious more of like what I maybe I was at the start, but what I try to do now is I make parts so difficult for myself that all I can think about is not fucking them up. OK, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so start. like I'm I'm concentrating on doing my thing and I can't get distracted by it because yeah, you know, I have to remember my like not to run out of breath here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like get too excited at a gig, go a little bit too hard, run around for a couple of times. I'm a, I'm a chunky boy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Out of breath then and you can't do the next parts. And with the newer stuff now we're after doing, I'm after really committing to mm. kind of har- harsher vocals. Yeah. So the last thing I want is for someone to listen to it and be like, that's unreal. And then turn up and, you know, I'm yeah. just sweating in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I kind of, yeah. I'm writing stuff. Has to it been interesting, myself. Pavel, to watch his um, progression as a vocalist? Oh, well, definitely. Like we've seen many, many bands going from the starting point where they're jamming together and they're getting their first experience playing live yeah. into getting better and better by working in frets all the time. So I've seen it in Petrofia as well. Yeah. He was watching us like a dodgy guy coach. <laughs> <laughs> this is their next one. Yeah. <laughs> so then um, you had your rough demos. You approached Chris and. Yes. Um, you just kind of work together then and yeah basically then you mastered it and why did you pick Aiden? it's an obvious obvious um, one but like how did you, did you obviously came across him through other bands did you yeah i heard some recordings he did yeah he, he did all the production mixing mastering and uh, i like some of his stuff yeah and then i was working with him on one live live kind of studio performance with baylor okay and like I've seen his kind of work ethic and like the way he's doing things and what he can hear from the basically micing up the cap or micing up the drum. Mm-hmm. And I've seen like he, his ear is really really spot on. Okay. So I trusted, yeah, I trusted him with that with mastering. Yeah. Uh, all the DP and basically the first thing he sent me, I said, yeah, this is exactly I how I wanted it to sound. Okay. You know, so I was very happy. Yeah. So you released the EP. Um, you did a few gigs here and there. The best one was you got to where'd you go to again? To Doom. Got Doom. Got, got Doom. Doom yeah, yeah, in Slovakia. Slovakia. Yeah. Okay. Mental. Yes. <laughs> I've never played on a stage like that in my life, man. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Felt like a uh, you know, imposter syndrome. Do you know, like, yeah, you're like, am I really supposed to be here? Like, you know, yeah. what I mean? or you're gonna get cut out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Full stage crew, everything. Like, and do you get nervous? Uh, I've kind of beaten it out of myself. Right. I've done it so, so much that I'm more like, oh, for fuck's sake, than nervous. Right. Do you know? No. So staring down that crowd, how hard was that? All 20 people. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, no, there was, because we, yeah. we were on early enough. But like, as we started playing, people started coming out of their tents and stuff. Oh, ah, yeah. Because it was, everyone's kind of camped around the main stage anyway. But like, when we started playing Feet to Beast, <laughs> that dance feet section. <laughs> There was this fellow like hammered standing up on the stack of monitors, <laughs> a big massive. He was trying to hand me a bottle of vodka, but there's you know, there's a big gap between the stage, <laughs> and it, it was it was early enough, so there wasn't that many security on. They were just like, "What? What's going on?" Like, it was just good crack. So but, feed um, feed the beast is that old? Yeah, but um, in a different. I, I wasn't half as competent. Like the, the the vocal parts were way more relaxed. Okay, do you know what I mean? There wasn't as much clean singing in it or speaking or whatever you want to call it it was just all I was still at that stage it was about a year ago was it a year and a bit I was still just screaming over everything right. but then uh, I tried to pull the finger out a bit and start yeah. practicing a bit more and spice it up a little you know yeah I mean um, like again I saw your performance in The Siege which was 2018 um, I think Dahi on bass yeah there was Dahi on bass yeah, yeah Dahi from Galak yeah oh yeah that's right actually yeah, you're yeah, spot yeah. on yeah, yeah. Jesus we Christ we played with him actually in a uh, Fantastic got a few gigs. I yeah. seen him get the <laughs> he got the headstock of his bass stuck in the roof. So we're up, we know where we were playing in the spalpine. Yeah. The stage was a little too high, a massive bass. Yeah. Whatever he leaned back, like <laughs> see the sharp head on the top of the bass and got stuck in the roof. In paler, in paler, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? The siege performance again that stands out. It was a fantastic performance, and again, quite the front man out down into the crowd, back and forth, you know. 
Um, you were loving it, Pavel. I was watching you as well. You were just right. quite happy in that the was, background. That was there, a very, very happy speech for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. This is the, the one I split my head open. Oh, Jesus. That was... <laughs> right, yes, so we yes. played, a gig, played a gig with you and then you disappeared. Well, I disappeared as well because... Yeah. Um, I was busy yeah. putting drinks into myself, lots of gin and yeah. all the other stuff. You were celebrating your yeah. performance. And then <laughs> I remember... I remember Still remember with the uh, Denton Slugger on. Yeah, I remember you. you and I came, I came up. You more or less nailed me <laughs> and a few others as well to get into the in up by the monitor. <laughs> that was it then. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I remember I was seeing people kind of swaying and just moving their heads. I said, no, this is not how it should be. And I was my arms, arms open and I took like four people with me and just smashed them into the into the front and just the mosh pit started and yes then i landed somewhere i don't know where and yeah. some i didn't even notice but there's some security guy who told me that my head is split open and i'm covered in blood so <laughs> he looked like he got a belt of a pipe or something yeah like I, I saw this i saw it yeah i, I was there <laughs> it, is, it wasn't it wasn't bleeding for some reason though there was fucking you weren't bleeding at all did they clean you off or yeah 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 yeah, yeah. it was nasty it was nasty we went we the, the next was it a couple of days later then you were like oh I know what happened to me and then there's, yeah. a, there's a picture of a mosh pit and in the background is black and white there's just him like this like wide eyed and grinning holding a bottle of Jägermeister <laughs> <laughs> and he's like ah this is what happened that's what happened to me Jesus lads so your last um, <sighs> transmission we'll say as a band right this might surprise you it was the 3rd of March uh, 2019 and it says thanks to everybody who came to Dolan's last night Savage sets from Zephyr worn out and 10 ton slug uh, thanks to bad reputation for having us, so so that was nearly a year. More Jesus, less. yeah, um, I'll probably get on the old social media thing properly now. Um, I and Instagram, you're hopeless, like I, I, I must say, I, like, I, like, I, clear, no. <laughs> like I, I, you can have to I'm bring 20, your A game now. I'm lads. 26, right? And what? I remember I'm 26. You're 26. Yeah. Oh I know, I like to stay to me, like. <laughs> but I didn't. We didn't really have the internet till I was about sixteen. Right. I was out in the back of Arsenal. I'm from the city, but I've lived in the countryside for ages. Okay. I had fucking nothing out there, and uh, like the internet was just a laugh and a joke. Yeah. And I think it was a couple of years after that. Then I was someone came up to me and they were saying like, "Man, you can't be saying shit or whatever like that online." I'm like, "What are you on about?" And be like, "People will be fucking getting bad or freaking out." And I'm like, "But but it's not real." Do you know what I mean? Do you remember when everyone was on was online first and there was all these like ads for cyberbullying and they were like, don't worry, it's not real life. <laughs> and like five years later, people are getting fucking losing their jobs and stuff yeah, for yeah. saying shit. Sure, Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's mental. Yeah. yeah. So that kind of, it's just too absurd for me to take seriously. And then I look at people I know well enough and they're arguing with each other online and it's just like, this is fucking bollocks. Like. Yeah. Well, but you know I'll have to, necessary it's necessary as well. No, it I'll is. get on the old, um, I suppose I'll have to do I'll, Pavel's doing too much as it is you know yeah. it's down to you man <laughs> is this an intervention is it <laughs> <laughs> yeah I would say I didn't want to post too much stuff yeah because we've, nothing, we've because nothing to really say either like do you know what I mean we, we, we're kind of waiting till we have well yeah. the you know what? copy yeah. like do you yeah, know yeah, what I mean yeah, yeah. after this podcast you can move on now yeah, you know yeah, what yeah I mean? we, we, we've stuff to push that'll, now like, that'll you know? be that'll be out next Thursday week we'll say yeah and you know but as I said look get on Instagram anyway and um, I suppose you're just gonna have to go onto Facebook, man. Oh, Unfortunately, I will, I will. You're just gonna have I to think as well. Like, if that. I'm steaming, I don't trust myself with a, ca with a camera, <laughs> like, I don't want to be incriminating myself. You know what I mean? I'm bad enough as it is. From that t that post in March, I want to bring your minds back to then. Um, had you much ideas for songs at that stage, or, or were you demoing? I, Pavel, or? I was gonna cross my fingers, it was like can we write something better can we do something heavier <laughs> and then I remember you, you were supposed to riff the beast or something you showed me yeah. and I was like ah ah he'll, okay. he, he'll write something he fucking yeah, yeah so how far back are we going lads you know for new stuff it was two years ago in March it's going to be two years now actually yeah we went uh, we went to Slovakia right we had one gig booked in my hometown mm -hmm. <laughs> and we went for a week to my parents holiday house Right, where there was right. no his parents' holiday house. Now it looks like you're gonna be fucking murdered, <laughs> and you know what I mean. And it's lovely, don't get me wrong, but like you're talking East Slovakia, right? So 
it's your, do you know what I mean? Educate you get, you me. get to Slovakia and then you keep going. All right. Are we it's talking about Eastern Eastern Europe? Bears like, and fucking bear, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. So, and drove us out to the the town. The name of the town translates to like little apple tree. And you get there and it's like fucking. <laughs> You're looking at the houses and like, were people shot up against them? Like, oh, you know what I mean? like, <laughs> crazy, but yeah. it was it was lovely because it was really it was like snowing, fucking hard. Right. So you started. How so many of you were there? By the way, it was just three of you or two of you? It was uh, the two of us yeah. and the drummer Ed. Okay, Ed and was he there, was so. able to get a loan of um, equipment over there mm. from I wouldn't doubt friends you. and all that. And so yeah. when we went out to the to his parents' kind of country house or whatever you call it, the holiday home. Yeah. We just set up a little small kit. Right. Uh guitar, amp, and we had a little was it a little video Yeah, video little zoom recorder. video recorder. Okay. We'd no mic so I'd we just record it and I'd stand close to it and yeah. scream into it. Right. And uh, And that's wrote. where it kinda really starts. So basically the half of the album that's half of the album was, was written there, there in Jesus. one week. In one week. Uh, yeah. Wow. R- Rome was written there. The yeah. yeah, about half of it, Jesus, yeah. Yeah, Rome. Rome, Dice Dice Plastic, Boys Boys was written there, Boy Party, we're Uh, still working on names. Yeah, (laughs) actually they're the four songs you gave me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fucking hell, and I must say, (laughs) they're fantastic. Right, okay, since you brought it up anyway, I'll talk about uh, Rome, right, my impressions of it. It's kind of like a waltz of the damned is the best way, way to describe it. <laughs> My tortured soul. <laughs> you know, and the Notice riff. me, senpai. The <laughs> riff. It's all about the riff in this song. Um, <laughs> it's fantastic, man. And actually, it's probably out of the four you gave me. It's, for me, it's probably your more straightforward track of of them yeah. four. There's there's a lot of stri- more straightforward ones as well. Okay. Like there's um, some, there's, there's a good bit of fuckery and then there's kind of straightforward ones yeah, as well. Yeah. You know, we like... I like mixing things up in yeah. that regard. I know, yeah. Because there's the, like music nowadays, like it's t- so dense, there's so much of it. I mean, you listen to something and it's all the same yeah. all the way through. Mm. I don't know, man. It doesn't um, catch my attention anymore, you know? So but like, to like Rome, the intro and that riff, is fucking unbelievable. And of course, people can't obviously hear it yet. The best part in it, apart from the riff, is do you know when you sing i suppose your palace is tremble and ache make no mistake that's yeah, yeah. class man yeah, nice one, boy. yeah 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 so that was um that was one of the first ones you wrote then in that cab- cabin has it changed dramatically yeah. since that yeah like um i was playing around with the idea i had the idea for rome in my head for ages um that i wanted to do something with i didn't know what i was going to call it and uh <laughs> we called it uh our drummer ed loves giving me abuse Oh, yeah, and uh, we love it on the show, yeah. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were we were right in Rome, and um, the, he, there's a fucking what's the name of the drink? The Borowicka is like the local kind of the spirit of Slovakia. Slovakia, yeah. yeah. And uh, he's saying he calls it the Revenge of the Forest because the berries they pick in the forest. Because the next day, like you'd be in bits after it. <laughs> I and wish then, people could see Pavel's face there, looking like a demon. Oh here. man, we demented, <laughs> demented. It's like a, it's like the Shivowitz. It's like a brandy made out of. Um, yeah, it's made of juniper, so it's juniper. similar to gin, but it's kind of like gin, but of gin. very healthy. Though. It's so different, man. That like I've kind of ruined all spirits for myself. That makes me sick, even smelling them. But like tasting that, it was like something I never drank before. Mm. But anyway, Revenge of the Forest is what they nickname it, and uh, Ed was mocking me for writing about my emotions and I was like yeah I'm going to call the song Revenge of My Emotions and he was like oh Rome or <laughs> Revenge of My Emotions fantastic <laughs> well, that's, that's the fantastic <laughs> yeah so that and, then I, and then I put something serious to it like but yeah that's the thing we kind of we were able to we were jamming so much and having to crack with each other winding each other up and then we take a joke and kind of go from there so that's the kind of yeah. how the create creativity kind of yeah. Flowed, if you will, you know, it's just take something stupid yeah. and then make it yeah. good. I, I hope I like uh, the song Diaspastic. Yeah, let's talk about that one. Ed was wrecking my fucking head, <laughs> and uh, I was giving him a bit of grief. And he goes, Yeah, but I, I'm diabetic. Like, he goes, You're a fucking diaspastic. And we all just stopped and looked at each other. There we go. Because we were working on that, we were just jamming the the music to that. And we'd go out for fag breaks and yeah. a couple of shots and chill out for a bit, like, and kind of talk. Um, <laughs> because, again, 
that song um, it starts off with a kind of a real swagger to it yeah you know um, like I could nearly picture you singing it live and the chorus again what a chorus don't kiss me honey because I ain't sugar free you'll die spastic with me how did that come about um, <laughs> was it again related to being diabetic or no uh, there, yeah that's the, the sugar free part because yeah. I always would be uh, like the song the, then descends the, the, into madness yeah yeah, you know, yeah basically so it's kind of um, the last siege we played I got very swifty I'd say I got very drunk and had a lot of fun yeah and I've it's basically the mother of hangovers and you know you fucking broken yourself and all the kind of madness that ensues Blah blah blah. That was kind of the, the initial inspiration for it. Okay. But the, uh, my love is hot and runny, and I'm full of disease. But my body's supreme. Line. Yeah. Reminds me of a uh, a dirty whore <laughs> that uh, I know. <laughs> she's a lasher, but she'd wreck your head. And uh, oh, I don't name names. Jesus. No, Christ. no, 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 no. She's she's just a wreck. She's just a wreckhead. And I, she was so hammered. I didn't even do nothing with her. And then the next. Like two or three weeks later, she was like, "You, you gave me chlamydia," and I was like, "I didn't even go near you, you lunatic!" <laughs> and as much as she wrecks your head, the next time you see her, you're still thinking, "No, no, 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 get me away, devil woman, devil woman, devil woman." Brilliant. So it's like she's f- full of disease, but the body's supreme, you know. Oh God Almighty! So there's just little. St- I, I yeah, wrote there- most of the lyrics that on the way back, and because I when we drove, uh, when he drove to fucking Slovakia and back, yeah. or oh, when we played Gatun, by the way, he drove from Cork to East Slovakia and Wouldn't back. Doubt him. Three and a half days each way. Yeah. It was fucking torture. But, uh, yeah, so I had a lot of downtime, so I was kind of just writing and probably stuff. And as personalities as well, that's hard as well, isn't it? Um, you we, you know, that, I didn't that could either make or break a band. It made, that, that me, him and Ed, we know now, like, do you know what I mean? We'd, we'd never fight over it, because if there was a fucking time to do it, man. Yeah, exactly, you yeah. Know? It's grand. Yeah. We could kind of see as well, if if one person was getting pissed off, like, Mm. Don't give them a bit of space or all yeah. that or yeah yeah you know yeah. go to the shop we'd uh, we buy each other little presents <laughs> come back and um, another you know, t- anything to just maintain that little bit of sanity that you have because yeah. we'd no air conditioning in the car and it was during the summer and uh, yeah getting there was kind of it was a bit tough but on the way back because after we played got home man like what was it four nights yeah four nights of drinking four nights who of jumped drinking. in actually for doing bass for that that was that was, that was Kieran's first gig with us was it <laughs> yeah. he flew over go away he flew over yeah. played a gig and flew back fucking hell but okay. uh, there was a river right next to the to the fucking to the stage so we were able to just by day three we were just sitting in the river because it was like 30 32 yeah. degrees something. I've seen the pictures actually of sitting that river, in the river yeah. just drinking cans yeah. trying not to go insane um <laughs> Also, as well, in that part of the world, for some reason, you ask them for water, they look at you like you're fucking a piece of shit. <laughs> no, we have beer, it's cold. One euro. Yeah. You're like, can I have water, please? <laughs> I've been doing this all week, man. But, um, yeah, we, I remember we sat back in the car and we had to drive from, like, driving from there all the way back. And he just fucking looked at me and he was a broken man. And uh, he goes, I don't have any money left. I went, what? He goes, I think I lost it or spent it all. And I was like, and I was like what about petrol money? I was, like, we, we, I was like, I don't have any money left either. And Ed was like, I have no money left. And we were like, oh man, what? And I was like, no, no. Sober Chris. Sober Chris definitely wouldn't have let myself in the situation. Because I know what I'm like. I was like, I definitely fucking skied money away somewhere and just searched dug through every fucking bit of luggage and I found 150 <laughs> quid that I'd like rolled up into a little ball and stuffed into an inside pocket Legend. and put like in just so I couldn't get at it even if I wanted to because it like it took me an hour to find it like do you know what I mean Jesus. it was like but that got us petrol money back yeah. and I got still fucking was food poisoning in Austria some experience driving back uh, like after four nights of drinking at the festival you're shook I, like you're I rattled. woke up Man, it's, it's the it's worst hangover in the world and this look at the time okay I should start driving now we have like two, two, and two days two and a half days to get back <laughs> we'd make, we make the ferry like because we'd normally oh, if we missed right. the ferry none yeah, of us have money we're yeah. doubly <laughs> fucked like but like, and, uh, so it's I not even drinking man it's beyond drinking because all the lads were bringing their own homebrew spirits as well okay so you get talking to someone a half the lads would because you're in the middle of nowhere in Europe they have no no English so you just communicate by 
you have a fucking drink, I'll have a yeah, drink, yeah. you have a drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the end of it, everyone's just laughing and holding at each other. Yeah. And that goes on again and again and again and again. And then he has to drive and fucking... I always say he wasn't born, he was grown in a lab somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think a lot of people think that could yeah, been truthful, yeah. yeah. That whole journey back well, must have been as ropey as fuck, like, was it? Yeah, because we didn't have any accommodation booked, so... Oh, I forgot about stuff. Were you just sleeping four, in the car? Like? Four or five oh, times, Jesus. I just put a sleeping bag somewhere on the ground. Because it was so hot as well. We could just, yeah. you take a sleeping mat, pull over. As well, the motorway is there, man. There's layboys everywhere, yeah. like... We just fuck off into a field for two or three hours and lie mm-hmm. down. <laughs> we and stayed in a hostel <laughs> once in Germany, and that was it. It was on the way there. I was on the way, and I was on the way there. Yeah. So in seven days in a car, we had a bed once. Jeez. There was a funny message because when we were, I think it was in France when we were waiting for the ferry. Mm. It was really hot. And uh, I had food poisoning as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was really hot, and we were waiting yeah. for well, well two hours to yeah. get into the ferry, and there's no air conditioning. It's a roasting hot. You cannot go anywhere from the car, basically. And uh, because you're in the queue, like you're just sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> I was chatting with a friend of mine, and she was saying, "Oh Jesus, your car must smell like when you pull out the hooker out of the lake." I said, <laughs> <laughs> Girl, if I pull out the hooker out of the lake, I just want a hanger on the mirror. Is there air freshener? <laughs> I remember as well we were getting searched by customs in France, <laughs> or they attempted to search us. Like on the way over, it was grand. Go through England, and then when we get to France, there's a big line on everyone from the UK is there like GB stickers on their car yeah. and then the customs guy looks and he goes Irish? and we go yeah and he goes oh and just waves us to the front of like a two hour queue <laughs> and they just let us straight through like Irish much better than British <laughs> <laughs> and like, like two hour queue and they're like searching every car Jeez. but on the way back they seen us at the, the customs they opened the car and we stood out and they just looked at the fucking because we had the gear for two bands and all our camping gear like stuffed in and we were stinking like and it was hot and they opened we opened the car and got out and they just looked <laughs> they just looked at the car and they were like they were like Irish is it? And like, yeah like go on you're, you're fine like. <laughs> we could have had anything oh they, didn't, they didn't even scan the car actually in Calais we could have had fucking anything Jesus mm. a dead body in there <laughs> yeah a dead hooker yeah <laughs> um, I want to talk about uh, the opening track on the podcast Beast I think that was the first track I listened to actually um, starts off in a kind of manic rush and then switches beautifully then you know I know you want to get away um, get away from me yeah if you're never going to get away not yeah. from this vicious smile <laughs> what's going on there like it's pretty uh, see I dark that ah uh, it is on paper, but yeah. if you see us playing it, okay. the way I kind of thought about that song is I wanted like comedy performed with violence. Right. If that makes any sense. Yeah, it does, yeah. Without yeah. sounding wishy washy. No, no. So it's all very meant to be taken tongue in cheek. It was all tongue in cheek kind of crack. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's still a metal song, so I would go for the darker images. Yeah. But like, I don't want to be Satan. No, Satan. Of course. No, no, no. Do you know what I mean? Which yeah. I like, don't get me wrong, I like, but. Um, Probably kind of serial killer. Serial killer? Yeah, kind of take on it as well. There's there's lots you can take from it, I suppose. Like, it's basically, I suppose, being a bit shy and then going on a mad session and then going insane. And there's that little part of you that's like, do you know, drink more cans, do more. Do you know what I mean? Do this, do this, do this. There's like kind of a feed the beast. It's it's, it's the anti conscience, do you know what I mean? There's hedonism in there and there's sexual connotations as well like you know and we are like, all slaves until we're dust for in, in lust, lust we, we trust, trust. <laughs> um, blood and cum no, in love with blood and cum yeah, we're, we are scum <laughs> but all those horrors cum. are fun yeah. you know? great it's like you know. I mean it's good crack yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. but it's the way you deliver it again of course yeah, yeah but like because I watched I remember I, what, what the fuck was it called it was like a it wasn't a Rocky Horror Picture show it was like a, they played in the Everyman Theatre and I went to see them when I was about 12 I was about 11. I remember my dad bringing me to see it and like halfway through he was like, I oh, shouldn't have brought you to see this. He didn't really look into it. It was like the horror circus of something, whatever. And oh, it was like... One Jim Rose, was it? I don't, I can't remember, right, man. Yeah, but it was like a horror circus-y kind of yeah. thing and there's all like, all that kind of shit in it. Like it's like the, what, the Rocky Horror Picture Show but like with yeah. Jeffrey Dahmer in there as well. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. really up to it. And it was, I remember like, even though I didn't get most of the jokes, it was just so funny and so mm-hmm. out there. Yeah. Like when I was 
to me, if I read something like that, it's clearly it's absurd. Yeah. And I'd laugh at it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, so that's I for for that song anyway, that's the kind of thing I was going for. That was it. As cool. well sometimes like I don't intentionally do things like if we write a song, I'll like freestyle the lyrics over it. Yeah. I started off big rap fan. Okay. And then I started singing blah blah blah. Yeah. So even just screaming, I'll scream sounds, I'll get the textures out and the yeah. rhythm, the vocal rhythm, record it and then later back I'll Yes. Start adding words to it. Yeah. I think I think that's and a good example of it. Actually, sometimes then yeah. I'll just things just rhyme themselves. Sometimes, yeah, like we are slaves for in lust we trust. Blah blah blah. Yeah. And I was just things just line themselves up, and I was like, that's fucking ridiculous. It's like I didn't even write it. You know what I mean? It just happened. And I was like, yeah. I showed the lads, and I was like, probably a bit too much. And they were like, no, nah, no, nah, grand. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what um, you want as well. Do you yeah, know what? do you know what I mean? Because at the like, end of the day, give man, your free speech and fucking. Churn it yeah. out there and, you know, let other people digest it. You know, I enjoyed yeah. it, man. And um, the bass as well and that is fucking fantastic. Shout out to Kieran. Kieran, he's yeah. a he's a good man. Kieran, Kieran, I don't know. Yeah, I always. I just point and grunt at him. Yeah. <laughs> he is a bass monster. Um, I love watching him live. He's um, fucking insane, man. Yeah. Yeah, he's as worn out there. much of a front Jesus man Christ. as any singer I've yes, ever seen is, yeah. in my life. Ever, actually, like, you know what I mean? Example, yeah. he's, a, he's a pure hardcore kid. Yeah. To the core, like he's a skate he's a good enough skater as well, which yeah. I didn't know. So I had a gaff party one day with him and he just flies past on a skateboard and fucking does an old <laughs> kick flip. I'm like, What? I've known you for like six years. Could you do this all the time? And then of course the hypnotic end to that is uh come with me, let's hide and play. Again, anti conscience. Was, was there of. Beast maybe one or two songs out of the ones I've listened to? Were were there kind of segments maybe of other songs put in, you know, no, to combine them? Like, uh, I had the be his demo before Ed and, and Kieran joined. Right. Yeah. So there was idea. The song was never finished at the time, but the yeah, it was it was one of those ones, man, that just <laughs> never got finished. Like I didn't even write the full lyrics until I think it was when we were actually recording it. It was like mm. I just couldn't fucking think of anything, and it's because I was screaming through the whole way through it, and then I added some cleans, and I was able to. It, it only got finished about three months before it got recorded. Like. Okay. And the last one then you gave me uh, is Boy's Party. The way I described that, it's kind of like a nursery rhyme from hell. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that, and like, again, some standout lyrics and and your delivery, again, right through all the tracks that I've listened to is fantastic. Uh, people will really appreciate it, Chris, when they hear it. Um, but just this one in particular stands out. It's and all the boys love me because of my dick is... <laughs> Then you just go smooth like jazz. Are you uh, doing, man? I got like, what gets you high, and I'm full of pizzazz, <laughs> and all the boys love me because my dick is smooth like jazz. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't laugh at that? Man? Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Like, even if I wrote the most disgusting, horrendous fucking manifesto <laughs> up until that point, and then I said that, you wouldn't be able to take the rest of it seriously. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's fucking class, man. Like, out of the four songs you gave me, it's a savage selection of songs. Um, they're dark, they're twisted, they're full of memorable courses and riffs. And maybe for anybody that hasn't heard G, I would say, maybe, now you can correct me if I'm wrong, but just to give him a rough example, it'd be probably like if System of a Down and Mr. Bungle fucked and had a love child, it would be probably sounding a bit like the four I think, songs. I think I can die happy now <laughs> that I've heard that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, That's because those four songs are very, very like that. The, yeah. There's the other ones then are... Yeah, see, you'll I get didn't different know was, You'll get different elements Yeah, I well. didn't know there was other songs, you but see, like, so, yeah. On the topic of influences, like, mm. there's the one thing... The, when I first started jamming with him, I basically lived in his house for 10 months. Like, three, four days a week. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I wasn't working at the time. Or if, if I was, it was like very sporadic, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'd do a couple of days here, a couple of days there, and I'd crash in his gaff, and we got to know each other really well. And we love anything strange, yeah. anything dissonant, um, again, anything funny, do you know what I mean? Things that aren't supposed to be funny, mm. said in kind of a, a funny way, whatever. Yeah. Well, what I think is funny now at this stage, I think I'm going so far down the rabbit hole, <laughs> I'm just an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I would say the boys started with the... We were in the cottage at the time writing the songs. And the boy I was just trying, let's try to do what's going to be the most annoying sound you can get out of the guitar. 
that would annoy people straight away from <laughs> the yeah, first second. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, so that would make most dissonant, stupid. <laughs> Compared to your last EP, like you've explored way more areas oh, in the four songs again. Mm. And like kind of what was hinted at songs like Gin and Burrow have been kind of expanded and developed upon, you know? And it's really cool mm. and it's fucking fun. Um, he had those songs on the EP written like structure wise, riffs wise. And when I got there, I was just like, right, I'll do my thing. He's done his thing. Yeah. Everything else is done. Then when we had a chance to do stuff together, we were kind of looking at her like, we do something fucking stupid. Really. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. And yeah. it's gotten to the point now where like, uh, we, some of the, some of the, the new the newer newer stuff now that we haven't recorded yet has been written in one jam, yeah. Because we're we're all after getting so tight with each other, mm. we know what makes each other laugh. We know what makes each other go fucking oh that's fucking sick rift, you know that ugh, face, yeah. And like him and Ed, I've never seen tighter men. I've never seen tighter men yeah. in my life. <laughs> I'm glad you brought up Ed because again, uh, like we've mentioned them, just kind of and as well, he's fucking instrumental in most of those lyrics as well. Okay. Because I'd write something and then he'd go, okay, 10% more sexy here, uh, 10% <laughs> less sexy there, um, this part needs to be more, you know, saucy or whatever, mm-hmm. and he or even just switch words around, things like that, like he's, he'd kind of edit them yeah. a yeah. little bit. Is he mo- very much a director as well of the band? Absolutely. Yeah, it comes across. Absolutely. Um, he's the, also as well, he's the only drummer I've ever properly jammed with that isn't fucking constantly late. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, just well, putting that it. out there. All right. And fucking, I was like, oh, he actually turns up. It's fucking great. I get yeah. on him. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, in terms he's, of his performance as well, fantastic. Um, right through the, the four songs, you know? Yeah, um, there's He's a lot more on other stuff as well. You'll see. I, I can't wait to get it out there. No? Yeah. Yeah. Well, basically, all the recording, all the album, it's just going to be 10 songs. Okay. The only time we spent in the studio, in the actual studio, was. One day, yeah, recorded the drums. Like set up, set up the kit. Record the whole drums in one day. Yeah, Jesus. Mike. Up. I, most, most of the takes are the first takes. Okay, yeah. on the album. Yeah. I recorded all the vocals in two nights. If if they had time to stay, that that night I'd have got them all done in one night. Mm. So I got eight songs. I got eight songs done in one night, and then we done two songs the next yeah. morning. Jesus, was your was your voice not shot? No. no. Because I mean, look, <laughs> practice, man. I'm not even joking. Uh, no, I'm serious. And like, I was hammered. He drank four bottles of wine while recording the vocals. Yeah. I was <laughs> just guzzling <laughs> bottles of wine yeah. doing it because you kind of. I was trying to get in the. the your, zone. your look. I said it to you already. Your vocal performance is standout. Um, fantastic. Um, fucking hell. Give him huge credit there. Well done on that, Listen, man. Uh, and your biggest test now will be to deliver that live. Oh, here, man, you know, I'm man. not worried about that at all. Cool. We've done it so, yeah. so much. It's the kind of thing, like, I could play in front of 100,000 people and it wouldn't it wouldn't bother me. We've done it so much. Okay. It's beyond. Right, good, good. Do you know? Yeah. Like, you ever, so do, are we, am I correct in saying now that your first gig is the Siege? It should be, shouldn't it? Or yeah. it be something planned before yeah. that? There's nothing planned before, so Brilliant. Siege is going to be the first one, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Fucking hell. Fucking love playing the siege, man. Yeah. Uh, sound is so nice. Yeah. I played in fucking, you know, not so great venues mm. all my life. So when you get a good one, man. Yeah. Oh, it was a nice touch actually to have you on it. Um, how did that come about? Did you campaign rigorously to John? Or well, yeah, I asked him last year. Yeah. He was just like, uh, we're doing the siege. And he was like, oh, when? Oh, the Easter one. I was like, all right. And then Kieran was like, <laughs> I just seen there announced that we're playing the siege, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's it's one of those things where man, where like if if he's like you get offered like do you want to play the siege, you just say yeah straight away yeah, and course, fuck yeah. it. If yeah. some if a member can't make it, we'll figure it out. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll Absolutely. never turn down playing that. It's great. So how far away are you from the album being uh, released? Are we talking about a summer release? I would say before summer. Okay, like, yeah, it's. It's nearly, nearly finished. Yeah, the, the, the track that's on the podcast tonight, um, how far developed is that in relation to mastering and mixing? And There's a few small bits and ideas okay. I want to try and okay. we, we want to have listen to it and see what works. And I really appreciate you giving me the track as well. Uh, nice, Fucking nice one for listening to it, man. You know? Yeah. You know? Um, 
finally I can actually we can show someone stuff mm. that will grow through your labor. <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? And like the the as I said, it's, it's like I just love the swagger and the heft as well um, of the tracks. You know, it's that um, baritone P, uh, PRS PRS that he plays. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's like that's what's changed as well. Like we want to say from the previous stuff, this stuff. Like I changed my setup completely. Did you really? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, okay. before for the EP, I was more into a very complicated setup with right. lots of sounds. Oh, it was a fucking pain loopers in the ass to carry that. Uh, was it the preamp? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like fucking 70 it kg. It was the weight of a person. Very, very, was your stuff, effects, very yeah. complicated, yeah. And uh, so I I was doing lots of ambient sounds through the mm -hmm. guitar, basically, from the behind. Like, basically, if you listen to Who Fuck the Monkey EP. Yeah. That's basically everything done with the guitar. Everything is all done with the, the guitar. Like burrow, all the all the, all the synthy sounds, sounds all the yeah, synthy yeah, stuff for the guitar. Great track, man, as well. And I kind of ended up when I was writing stuff, focusing more on the on the background sounds yeah. than on the actual riffs. Yeah. So I said, okay, that's enough. I'm gonna yeah. wanna change this. So now I just have one simple amp, walk pedal. That's it. Brilliant. Um, and I guess on the album, yeah. uh, we've a uh, DJ victim. Right. Okay. So on diaspastic, so yeah, you listen. Yep. To, yeah. Do you yeah, have, yeah. Yes. That's TJ Victim. Okay. <laughs> Do you know DJ Victim? He's a very famous DJ. Is that Con Doyle? No. <laughs> <laughs> Under another pseudonym. <laughs> Not that. Um, as 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 he said, I was slaughter drunk. Come the end of recording, drinking four bottles of wine. <laughs> Go on. In my bathrobe. Yeah. My nan's batter up, actually. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> As you do. Whatever floats your boat. Go on. Yeah, we're a close family. Um, yeah, so by the end of it, I was like, uh, I want to try something there. So we turned the gain up on the mic. Right. And I had the zipper on my fucking... <laughs> <laughs> zipper on my Adidas hoodie. <laughs> that wind up. I'm glad you didn't say nitrous. <laughs> <of onesie. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, my nan's gimp suit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just, it's just a zip, 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 zip. Jeez, so that's what the scratches on the, the recording. <laughs> that's it. We call it D, we call him DJ Victim. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Did I not hear um, a girl's voice at some yeah. stage? Um, yeah, it's the Jordans. Ah, very good. The Jordans. Um, so uh, that's um, Howard's. Howard's wife and her sister. Ah, very cool. Yeah. How did that come about? <clears throat> we tried those vocals. Yeah, basically, I was too Which, shit to hit the. Uh, <laughs> With Ed, Ed and Chris so, were trying to do those high vocals. It just it was too I, shaky. I, I don't know. I, I thought, let's try if the girls can do it. Also as well. Just for a change, just to have something. We could to have practice and polish it, but I would say, I think it sounds better with, a, with the female It sounds vocal. much better, yeah. Yeah. Like the, yeah, yeah. Good call just, just to have different voices. Yeah. It makes the track way better. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so even a lot of those tracks, it was just me singing, and then Ed done some backing vocals, and the second the backing vocals were done, the track is fucking twice as good yeah. you know just, yeah, yeah. it's crazy the little the little things how much of a difference they make mm. yeah so that's uh, cool the Jordans uh, is it just the one track they appeared on uh, yes yeah yes. Oh, okay and uh, Howard did some well, some group vocals with us as well See, yeah. Yeah. kind of wander around so we caught him <laughs> yeah really? so we're up in the band rooms we're just like ha, 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 you come here <laughs> <laughs> So what did Howard do? He just had a few guitars, or no? There was just the uh, group vocals in the same okay. song. We have a group oh, vocals yeah, and okay. boy party, right? Okay, and we're trying to get. Yeah, so I, I like the old Magna Pina link uh, between the two bands as well. Absolutely, mm. yeah, yeah. They are. I'm. He's sporting it. I'm sporting it. I, as hope, we speak. I hope you've since washed it since the last time. I no. I, I yeah, you had you. vocals on Magna Pina stuff as well. Oh, I had vocals on Magna Pina stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and sure, you took the mic off, fucking Howard. In Partalon there the other night, and I didn't take it off. You did. Him. He you invited did. it. My he favorite part of the fucking song, and you were roaring down. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, he Christ. beckoned me. He beckoned me. <laughs> um, that yeah. was that was fucking fantastic, man. What a gig! Oh what my god, gig. man! I forget, like because because I bump into Howard so much in the jam rooms and stuff. I don't see him play. I forget how much of a fucking machine that man is. Like, yeah, oh yeah, it's totally, insane. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It was definitely the best performance of Partalon I've ever seen. Yeah. yeah, did you think so? Yeah. I fucking thought so as well. Yeah. No, I wasn't sure about. Yeah, I've seen him just a few times, and, and that, like this that, was but, just yeah, most I, powerful delivery of everything. Oh man, man. and the st the setup as well with the two yeah, lights. Yeah, the two lights. Fuck there was at some me. stage I, I noticed like when the the two lights were swinging, were swinging, and they were swinging actually in the tempo of the song, and the shadows 
in the back, they're moving yeah. in the tempo of the song, and it was this it was incredible visual kind of I touch to it. And then the acid. Do you know the story <laughs> behind the lights? Uh, Mark Morrissey, shout out to Mark. Um, I met Mark, and I think Howard's, now I could be wrong, but um, I think it was Howard's granddad was in the Navy, and I think they're from... Yeah from the navy now i just hope i didn't get this fucking wrong but <laughs> i'm nearly sure it's yeah. it's from some legacy that was yeah, given yeah. to howard and he put him up because i asked mark about us as jesus are they going to be a regular thing in fred's because they fantastic. looked unreal you know? they had to the it, it was it was perfect for that type of music as well yeah you know i mean oh like, yeah big time. mood lighting was fucking yeah. Yeah, insane. And like, I mean, my buddy Jim, I don't know, Jimmy, Jim, shout out to Jim. He's back from California. He was at the gig that I night. Think I think I Dreadlocks. I think yeah. I did. So what a gig for him to fucking see. Yeah. And he was just going, oh, my God, are all the gigs like this in Carton? I'm there. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah man. Him, of course they are. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm glad you said that because I was wondering, did anybody think that as well? That was the best I've seen Park Long. No, fuck it. I saw him in um, Monolith as well. Um, with, mm. on the big stage with the sound as well and that was class as well you know so gigs wise you've confirmed the siege anything else in the in the mix at the moment where would you like to play would you like to say do a tour of of we'll say Dublin Galway Belfast for example yeah like we're like yeah, we're exactly, yeah. so focused on getting it done also as well the amount of stuff Pavel is doing of course yeah. do you know what I mean like that and I I played so many fucking gigs without ever having an EP or an album and it's good to get practice at it but after a while you're like why am I fucking doing this if I don't have the yes. music to give to people do you know what I mean yep. so you're like no and it was gonna it was gonna me I kind of really pushed for like I want an album yeah I want an album done right we were playing around with the idea of doing maybe two or three EPs or releasing singles and stuff and I was like mm. look lads if we just fucking suck that dick get that album done yeah we have it forever do you yes. know what I mean yeah. and we don't need to go back to it then and we can ride on that for three or four years if we want to yeah do you know I now, just think of Corosa for example there with Chalice Burner I mean they went through fucking hell to get that released you know yeah. and it's there it's no one can take that away that's from it them, you know? do you know what I mean so yeah so it's and great it's, uh, for another Cork band to have a fucking album out that's the way I look yeah. at it you know mm-hmm. as well he was saying a lot of to get it reviewed and stuff yeah, I was even with the EP before I was uh, writing to other kind of websites and magazines, yeah. and many of them told me, "Look, we only review full albums; we don't do EPs." That's interesting. Okay, yeah. that was mainly in Czech Republic, Slovakia. Before the Gotum, I was trying to get some, yeah, some publicity in there. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's maybe a bit fair. A lot of places want to see that the band is committed to making yeah. a full mm. product before. They yeah. go themselves yeah. reviewing it. Do you know what I mean? Um, I can imagine I, the amount of shit that they have to go through, like <laughs> all know, the yeah. time. Formats as well. I hope you'll release it on CD, will you? Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I like I, to I, have something. Yes. Thank do you know you. what I mean? I'm old school, and I fucking like my my physical CD. Yeah. <laughs> it used to be albums, and I know Cork bands in particular, Irish bands as well. Now Elder Druid are releasing a vinyl release. Their, uh, I think as well for the, the vinyl stuff, like the aesthetic of certain music suits vinyl a lot more. So like a lot of black metal is good on vinyl. Yeah. A lot of doomy, stonery stuff is good on vinyl. Yeah. I No, I know I know exactly what you're saying. Z Ren fit vinyl. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to we say. Never know, like, do you yeah. know? Uh, we'll see. Like we're waiting as well. The artwork for the album, Ed actually is doing the front cover. Ah, uh, cool. So I was he's in the front to ask cover. about that actually, in case um, I, I didn't want to put you on the spot about it. But nah, is it Ed? Nah. Nice one. Ed is in the front cover. Right. Then I have a friend of mine, Tom. Shout out to Tom. Right, bye. Better see you in training tomorrow, you prick. <laughs> uh, Tom will be doing the back of the right. album. And then we'll have someone else doing the inside cover and right. a CD in the back. And the idea is none of the artists will see each other's work. They'll just get the, yes. this is the team. Cool. Blah, blah, blah. And then we'll smash it together. Right. Kind of like what we did with a lot of the songs. Okay. Because he'd, you know, he'd have a death metal riff. Ed put a fucking funk beat to it. Yeah. And I'd like black metal screech <laughs> over it. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, just, yeah, we just yeah, smash yeah, it together. Yeah. And if it works, yeah. it works. Yeah. Do you know? If yeah. it doesn't, then... Uh, yeah, there's there's quite a lot for you to think about then. I suppose the usual band headaches with merchandising and 
getting yeah. a tour scheduled together there's there's a lot and as as well as that i suppose again with himself being yeah. so busy as well you know um, i haven't even really been given that much thought i'm so preoccupied with getting this done that when yeah. it's done i'll I, mm. i'll sleep for a week yeah Do you know what i mean yes. like yes. i'll be so yes. happy with that that i'm like oh when we play when we playing gigs ah, i don't give a shit it's yeah. done <laughs> you yeah. know what i mean like and look as i said we're all delighted to see um in the siege which I can't wait, man. Yeah, fuck it. Like, what a lineup, man. What a lineup. Like, there's a load coming of from Cork, bands, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And Limerick we're, as well, you know, so. We're coming in strong. We're coming in strong. So that's it, lads. Really delighted that you've given me one track and for everybody to listen to it. Exciting times ahead for Z-Ren and uh, wish you nothing but success. Nice one, boy. Thanks for having us. Slot. Yeah. Nice one. Oh, yeah. One other thing. I want to give a shout out to Verkalak. Congratulations, lads. Uh, they're doing a U.S east coast tour in may alongside spite and sacrilegia courses organized with invictus productions and black vomit propaganda that is starting on may the 16th at the really cool saint vitus bar in brooklyn i'm nearly sure zealot cult played there as well i thought i saw pictures of them at that bar and it's finishing up at get this the famous maryland dead fest on may the 24th yeah, that's that's fair fair going, lads. Well done, Verkalak, on that. Congratulations again. Check out the show on social media through Instagram, Facebook, uh, The Metal Cell, um, at gmail.com if you're a band and you want to get in contact. Uh, so that's it. Over and out. Over and out.